Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Will Goringer. Welcome back to the channel. On today's video, we're going to be talking about off-axis torque, what is it, and why you want to fix it. All right, so a couple years ago on my channel, I made a video called How to Throw Putters Better. And in that video, I explained the relationship between overstable putters like the Challenger OS and more neutral flying putters such as the Luna. And in that, I gave some throwing tips on throwing the Luna, such as throwing it a little nose up and with a little bit of hyzer. And what I was doing in that video is I was teaching you how to combat off-axis torque without even really explaining what it is and how it was affecting your throw. So I want to take this opportunity to kind of go a little more in-depth on why it happens and specifically how to fix it. So first, what is off-axis torque? So I'm going to use an ultimate as a visual reference because it's a little bigger, it's easier to see. And basically, when you're throwing a disc, it obviously comes out on an angle. So this is a hyzer angle, uh, depending on how you're viewing it. Um, but this, I'm holding it in a hyzer angle. So when I release it, I want the disc to come out on this angle. So what off-axis torque is, is if my release angle with my arm and my wrist is different than the angle that the disc is coming out on. So if my arm is moving more on a horizontal plane like this, but the disc is on the hyzer angle and I release it, obviously those angles don't match and you're gonna get a lot of wobble in your flight. So uh, to start, we're gonna grab some ultimates uh, and we're gonna throw some shots that kind of uh, dramatically show off axis torque using ultimates because they're a lot easier to see, they're a lot bigger. So let's go see some of those throws. All right, so in this first example, I'm throwing with my offhand to have more of a genuine example of off-axis torque. And you can see right out of my hand, the angle was not matched and it does not want to stay in the air whatsoever. It's going right to the ground. In the second example, throwing a normal backhand, the angle is matched a lot better. There's a little bit of wobble still, but going straight as I wanted to throw it and it's staying in the air. All right, so now we have a little bit more of an understanding on what off-axis torque is. Uh, and how it happens. One important thing to note uh, before I get into teaching how to fix it is uh, while you want it to be as good as possible, chasing perfection uh, isn't really realistic. If you've ever watched slow-mo uh, pros throwing, uh, almost all of them have some degree of off-axis torque. It is really hard to get that angle perfect, but as you're throwing faster speeds, uh, the, the really sharp wing of the driver will kind of self-correct in the air, which is also why a lot of beginners tend to throw really fast, really overstable discs, because it'll correct their bad form without even really telling them what they're doing wrong or uh, with them understanding how to fix it. So let's get into actually throwing some Lunas. So what I like to think about it, because I've been doing a lot of field work lately to try and get better at reducing off-axis torque and getting better at uh, upshots like 200 and in. And what's helped me in doing that, so when I grab the disc, before I even practice a walk-up, I just kind of move my wrist back and forth a couple times. This is kind of helping burn in my muscle memory the angle that I need my wrist to move on to match that angle. So as I'm lining up, just make sure the angle's good with my wrist. And then while I'm throwing putters, I don't like to have a crazy dramatic snap because I'm trying to match that angle as much as possible. So I like to keep a nice, slow, smooth swing. And I'm sure you've heard slow is smooth, smooth is far. That carries a lot of truth. If you keep your swing nice and smooth and you match the angle well, you're gonna have a good shot. So let's look at some throws with the Luna, uh, having some off axis torque and reducing it as well. All right, so back again with the lefty, but this time throwing a Crystal Luna. So you can tell, similarly to the ultimate throw, a lot of wobble out of the gate. Uh, it doesn't have the tendency to turn over as much, but I'm definitely not getting the distance or general flight that I'm looking for with all that wobble. Going to the normal backhand, we can see that as this releases, my wrist angle matches the disc a lot better. Uh, and the disc almost looks like it's frozen in the air right now. It is heading on a rope straight ahead, exactly where I'm aiming at. All right, so now we've seen some putter throws with some tips on how to correct off axis torque a little bit, how to reduce some wobble. Uh, so the final question is just, why would you want to do this? If you have a pretty good throw and you're having pretty good results with it, why should you work to improve and reduce this? 
Well, this is going to affect every disc in your bag. Uh, it's going to make your discs more overstable by throwing them correctly and reducing the wobble, which is going to make them want to turn over. And then by doing that, you're going to be throwing further. Your disc isn't going to be losing a lot of potential distance by having that initial wobble. If it comes out on the angle you want to throw it on, you're going to just purely increase your distance, which everybody's looking to try and do on the course. So I hope this helped you guys. If you have any questions, I'll be checking the comments below. Uh, leave your thoughts, questions, comments. I'll try to hop in uh, every now and then and help out people as much as I can. But uh, yeah, if you guys like my video, uh, subscribe for more content when I uh, try to post some more educational videos. And uh, I will see you guys next time.